I'm Matthew Trowbridge, and I'm here chatting with David McLaren, who is the NDP candidate for Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Hi, David. Uh, my first question for you is, why are you running for NDP? The NDP has uh, policies that I think are closest to my own values, and I think those are policies that will do the country a lot of good. Tell me a little bit about how the NDP is different from the other parties. The NDP would like to do things from the bottom up. The other parties, both the Liberal and the Conservatives, have done the economy from the top down. So they've been cutting corporate taxes, and in fact the Liberals cut $100 billion out of corporate taxes when they were in power in the 1990s. In order to balance their budgets, they had to cut way back on health transfer payments to the provinces. Uh, they had to cut out um, uh, funding from the employment insurance program. Um, they even cut back some of their own workers' pensions. That's a trickle-down kind of economy, and we know from the Reagan years in the U.S. that it doesn't really work, and it's proving not to work. The Conservatives came in, uh, and they've done the same thing for the last 10 years. They also cut corporate taxes to the point where the, the, they are the lowest now in the G7 countries. They also cut back on uh, health care transfers. They also used the employment insurance uh, program to balance their budget at a time when workers needed it the most. They simply cut jobs, good, well-paying jobs from the civil service. So that is not working. You know, if, if cutting corporate taxes worked in this country, we would be rolling in jobs. And that's not the case. There are people in this area, in Bruce Gray Owen Sound, who are really hurting. All you got to do is look at the storefronts in Owen Sound or Hanover or anywhere in this area to realize that there are folks who don't have enough money in their pockets and they're not able then to buy stuff at people's stores. We've tried one way. Uh, we know that doesn't work because we see the evidence all around us. So now it's time to try a bottoms up kind of approach to the economy. And that's the main difference between the, the NDP and all the other parties. Now, David, I keep hearing about this Trans-Pacific Partnership. What can you tell me about it? It's going to be a bigger problem. Than I so supply management is on the table, and that means that farmers who, who are in the dairy business, who are in the poultry business or in the egg business, are, may actually be uh, thrown under the bus with this particular agreement. The other thing about this agreement is that it reduces the content in our car parts and in our automobiles that is required for companies to sell cars in this country. And if that means that more cars are coming over with less Canadian content, that means fewer jobs in the auto industry. And Unifor uh, has, um, has estimated the job loss in the auto industry alone to be somewhere around 26,000 jobs. Now, those are exactly the kind of jobs, those good-paying, middle-class jobs, are exactly the kind of jobs that we've been losing. Why we would put, risk, uh, put those kinds of jobs at risk with an international agreement is, is really beyond me. And I know that Mr. Mulcair will, will, uh, will fight that sort of an agreement. It's going to give um, corporations, and in this case pharmaceutical companies, um, a longer time before their patents expire. If that's the case, that means that we will not be able to get life-saving drugs into generic production and therefore bring the cost down of those things uh, for, for a much longer period of time. So the NDP would not be in favor of a TPP that does that. I don't think it's in the interests of Canadians to do that. But if, if the TPP goes through, it's going to cost all of us uh, more than we think it is. I know that the economy is on a lot of people's minds right now. Uh, what does the NDP plan to do about this? The minimum wage in Ontario, which is well under 12 bucks an hour, is a poverty wage. You just cannot get to the end of the month on that kind of a wage. And people are, are working two or three jobs and trying to feed their families. Nobody who is working 40 hours a week should have to go to a food bank in order to feed their families. This is supposed to be the best country in the world, and uh, we just cannot seem to be able to get people out of that poverty cycle. And it's getting worse because we've lost a lot of good-paying manufacturing jobs. And right across the country, we've lost about 400,000 manufacturing jobs since uh, the Harper government took power. Well, what people need in this area and right across the country is a living wage. And in, in Bruce Gray Owen Sound, that living wage is around 15 bucks an hour. A lot of people are not getting that. And so a lot of people are really falling down between the cracks. Um, and as a result, they and their children are not able to participate in the economic and social life of whatever community they're in. 
So the NDP is going to take the only practical measure that it can as a federal government. It's going to raise the minimum wage for its own workers in its own jurisdiction to $15 an hour. And quite frankly, the private sector really needs to step up here and start paying their employees in the fast food industry or in the big box retail stores. They got to start paying a living wage. If the big box stores alone in this area, in Bruce Gray Owen Sound, paid their employees a living wage, there would be $22 million more in the local economy. The other thing that the NDP in general would do is, is institute $15 a day childcare. Children who are in the lower income bracket do much better later on in life because they've gone through a professional safe childcare program. We'll raise the income tax rates in corporations at least 2%. We will also close some of the loopholes that corporations have right now and that their CEOs have. And what will you do for Bruce Gray Owen Sound? Bruce Gray Owen Sound, we know, is not in good economic shape. What I'd like to do is, within, almost as soon as I'm elected, is to call an economic summit, a meeting of politicians and farmers and business people, unions, maybe even artists, because there's a really good art, artistic community in this area, and sit down together and work out what an economic plan would look like for this region. So the NDP has a plan of getting some 90,000 young people back to work through a series of uh, supported internships and apprenticeships. And the only, the only thing that we really need next is to make sure that there is some hook into educational, post-secondary school education. Um, and the NDP would like to foster that kind of uh, activity. Uh, we've got the Georgian College and they're doing some interesting things, but we have no real uh, uh, connections with, uh, with universities. Um, and I think that we can do that, and if we can do that, and if we can hook that into the economy, that'll help as well.